What is a ghost? In The Devil's Backburn, a ghost is scary, but not evil. It represents the past, but also the future. A ghost that's vengeful, but can never be freed. Meet Santi, the one who sighs, who's much more than your typical Halloween ghoul. Before Pan's Labyrinth, Hellboy and Pacific Rim, Guillermo del Toro made this modern masterpiece where he could truly flex his creative muscles and work with both a sizable budget and full creative freedom. Me gusta el melodrama, me gusta que la gente reconozca los sentimientos, pero que los encuentre en un estado más puro de lo que los encuentra en la, en la vida diaria. Del Toro's filmmaking career began rather oddly. His first feature, Kronos, swept critics away when it was released in 1993. He was then quickly offered the opportunity to work on a big budget Hollywood film, Mimic, and went to America. As we discussed in my video on Mimic, links in the description below, it was a horrendous experience for the director. Infamously, Miramax interfered with his creative process, and Bob Weinstein in particular wreaked havoc on the set, not allowing Del Toro to do his job. After this experience, Del Toro understandably needed a refresher. He needed to get back to his roots and wanted to make a movie in his native language with full creative freedom. So he turned to an old treatment he wrote in the 80s for his screenwriting thesis. Terminé un tratamiento, pero nunca me gustó. Antonio Trasorras y yo, que éramos muy amigos, le dije a Antonio, ¿por qué no hacemos un guión completamente nuevo, que no sea ni el tuyo ni el mío? In the behind the scenes for The Devil's Backbone, he revealed that he didn't even particularly like the treatment he made, but with the help of screenwriters David Munoz and Antonio Trasorras, the story transformed into something he was passionate about. Feeding this passion is the fact that the director has actually encountered ghosts, once while filming in New Zealand, and once after his uncle had died. He recalls as a young boy asking his uncle to send him some sort of sign that there's an afterlife after he died. And he died. All of a sudden I heard this, this really deep sigh. Like that's why in Devil's Wagon the ghost is called the one who sighs. Unfortunately, Del Toro had a hard time finding funding for his new film. Due to its unconventional nature and wide scope, the Mexican film industry board didn't want to touch the project. The acclaim of Kronos didn't help pull finances either, but he wasn't about to give up. He remembered talking with acclaimed Spanish director Pedro Almodovar about Kronos when it came out. Almodovar had told him to reach out should he ever need help making a film, and Del Toro took a chance and did just that. Thankfully, Almodovar agreed to produce the film using his production studio, Aldesio. He would then write in the foreword to the behind the scenes production book that Pedro Almodovar had saved him. El, el fantástico es el único género donde puedo hacer algunas imágenes que no puedo hacer en ningún otro. Eh, hay imágenes que yo encuentro de una, aunque suene absolutamente enloquecido, de una enorme poesía. It took about three months to create concept art for the film before bringing on a production designer, makeup team, and wardrobe designers. He explained in the production book that he actually prefers to dedicate a good three to five months working with the team, but since he had a commitment to direct Blade 2, that time was actually cut short. Not that you would guess that anything was rushed by watching the film. The rich, gothic atmosphere is palpable, and the setting complements the themes perfectly, thanks in part to Guillermo Navarro, the master of cinematography, who would go on to work with Del Toro on Pacific Rim, the Hellboy films, and, of course, Pan's Labyrinth. It's a photograph of description, it's a photograph that te que por lo menos trata de, de estimularte a involucrarte, a ir en la dinámica formal de la película para contar una historia así. The film is set during the Spanish Civil War, circa 1939. General Franco and his army of Spanish nationalists are poised to win the war, and the Republican cause is all but doomed. Carmen, su marido fue un hombre de izquierda, es un valiente. No, señor. La valiente soy yo. Ricardo era un hombre de libros, de ideas. A small orphanage in the middle of nowhere dedicates itself to looking after the children of fallen soldiers, and even hides within its walls a mini treasure trove of gold meant to be used to support the resistance. In the middle of the orphanage courtyard is an undetonated bomb, serving as an ever-present reminder of the war. And to Carlos, a young boy who's abandoned at the orphanage by his tutor following the death of his father, he is reluctantly brought into the orphanage by caretakers Carmen and Dr. Casares. No puedo admitir otro crío. Los que hay apenas comen. Lo siento. Un enemigo. Decidan usted. O el niño pasa hambre aquí o lo matan allá afuera. It doesn't take long before Carlos is bullied by fellow orphan Jamie. His discomfort is furthered when he learns that his bed once belonged to the dead boy named Santi, who appears at Carlos' bedside and haunts him incessantly. Yet, ultimately, Santi is not who the children should fear, but Jacinto, the former orphan turned violent sociopathic janitor. Jacinto plots to steal the gold in the orphanage, and Santi ominously warns that many will die because of his greed. Habla conmigo. No quiero que nadie se muera. Muchos. 
In order to survive, Carlos and the others must learn the secret of Santi's death and piece together the truth about the doomed situation they find themselves in. The pacing is excellent, the story unfolds naturalistically in a creeping way, and it never relies on jump scares. The atmosphere is perfect and the muted colour palette helps add to its Spanish Gothic aesthetic. The film is very dense and filled with symbolism, the most obvious is the bomb, but there's also the way ghosts serve to represent tragedy and how tragedies are doomed to repeat themselves. Del Toro also infuses an interesting discussion on the ghost-like qualities of memory and the ways that memory of the past can influence the future. It's a fantasma. Un evento terrible condenado a repetirse una y otra vez. The title of the film refers to the Devil's Backbone, a birth defect held by children who were never meant to be born. These unborn find new purpose by becoming immersed in limbo juice, which the orphanage then sells to superstitious villagers. The image of an unborn child floating in amber is rife with thematic resonance, serving to reinforce how the dead still provide meaning to the living, how the magical pervades real life, and the ways that the living can place a little too much faith in the past and the dead while ignoring the practicalities of the present. Despite the layers of symbolism, the movie never feels confusing or inaccessible. One of the beauties of Del Toro's filmmaking style is that it creates genre films that feel elevated from your standard fare. It's this unique style that makes it difficult for him to market many of his films or receive funding, since it's hard to fit his stories in one distinct category. But once he's able to bring his visions to life, the result is a perfect blend of classic filmmaking, Spanish magical realism, and a dash of art house. The characters are fantastic, and the children impressively manage to carry a movie with naturalistic performances. Marisa Paredes, who worked with El Murdovar in films like All About My Mother and The Skin I Live In, is excellent as Carmen. Her chemistry with Federico Lupi's Dr. Casares is subtle and heartbreaking. <laughs> The engaging story takes many unexpected turns, like the revelation that we should be more scared of the living than the dead. Yet even with Jacinto, he's a somewhat pitiful character as the prince without a kingdom, the man without warmth. Similarly, Jamie, who starts off as a bully, turns out to be far more sympathetic than expected. <laughs> The beginning of the movie sets him up to seem like he's killed Santi, and this red herring adds to the mystery of the orphanage. It is, and it isn't really a story about a ghost. Instead, Santi is merely one element that adds a touch of fantasy to this harsh world of war, evil, and unrealized potential. A lesser film might have leaned in too far into the ghost's special effects, or put too much time into crafting cheap scares with its spectres. Instead, The Devil's Backbone lets its haunting nature unfold slowly and subtly, resulting in a much more discomforting film. Guillermo's classic is more than just a ghost story, it's a war story, it's a political allegory, it's a drama filled with pathos, and a story about the harsh realities of the world as filtered through the eyes of children. Though it isn't scary in the traditional sense, its themes are chilling, and it's a movie that will stick with you long after the credits roll.